Members of the Board of Trustees, Chancellor Joelle Laguerre, President Marie Elaine Burns, Merritt College faculty, administrators, and staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the Merritt College Class of 2018. My name is Christine Hernandez, Vice President of Student Services. I am honored to welcome you to Merritt College's 2018 commencement. It makes me incredibly proud to see so many students improving their lives through the power of education. 
Well done, 2018 graduates. As presiding official, I take great pleasure in calling to order these auspicious proceedings, the commencement exercise for the Merritt College Class of 2018. To begin these proceedings, I am honored to introduce our platform guests. On the platform today to lead the celebration are, and please hold your applause until all names have been read, Meredith Brown, Board of Trustee President, Dr. Joelle Laguerre, Chancellor, Linda Handy, Board of Trustee, Julina Bonilla, Board of Trustee, Dr. Sadiq Icaro, Vice Chancellor of General Services, Dr. Siri Brown, Vice Chancellor for Educational Services. For Merritt College, Dr. Marie Elaine Burns, College President. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, Keynote Speaker. Dr. Jeffrey Lamb, Vice President of Instruction. Dr. Mario Rivas, Academic Senate President. <laughs> Alessandra Cimenti, Glory Arwadi Oyanami, Valedictorians, Winshu Yang, Salutatorian, Deshay Richardson, ASMC, Dr. Deddy Del Rosario, Director of Business and Administrative Services, Dr. Richard P. Ramos, Dean of Applied Health and Public Safety, Jason Holloway, Dean of Mathematics, Science and Applied Technology. Dr. Saeed Khalid Hussein, Dean of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Ms. Maria Spencer, Interim Associate Dean of Educational Success. And Dr. Herbert Kitchen, Director of Student Activities and Campus Life. Our other seats have merits esteemed and notable administrators and faculty from the various instructional and student services areas. At this time, we will have welcoming remarks, and I take great pleasure in introducing the Honorable Meredith Brown, President of the Peralta Community College District Board of Trustees, Dr. Joelle Laguerre, Chancellor of the, Public, of the Peralta Community College District, who will be followed by our Academic Senate President, Dr. Mario Rivas, and Deshay Richardson, Secretary of Associated Students of Merritt College. Good evening, class of 2018. This is my favorite part of the academic year. I know it's your favorite part of the academic year, too. So let's celebrate. Dr. Burns and our Honorable Chancellor Joelle Laguerre the Peralta Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty, staff, education administrators, and my beloved Bay Area community. Thank you for your passion for education and your passion for social justice, and thank you for allowing me to serve as your, one of your trustees. So welcome to the celebration of the attainment of your academic goal. This is truly a wonderful occasion as we come together with family and friends to commemorate your achievements. We also now have a common understanding of what it means to sacrifice to move forward, to accept inconvenience and discomfort as the welcome alternative to the deferment of our dreams. We have all shared that understanding that struggle is the companion of progress. This evening, we celebrate your struggle, your progress, and your courage. Frederick Douglass, and we're going to talk about someone that has exemplified uh, courage and struggle. Frederick Douglass was born in the spring in Maryland in 1818. And 200 years later, we celebrate your greatness. And as we talk about the life of that great man, it's interesting to remember that he was actually the first African-American that was nominated to be President of the United States. 
and that was at the National Liberty Party Convention in June of 1848. And that was about 160 years before our first African-American president, Barack Obama. And now I bring up these historical icons to let you know that when you have that fire in your heart and that will in your spirit, anything is possible. That is what we are celebrating today. You have done what may have seemed impossible, but certainly is possible because here you are. You are your ancestors' wildest dreams. And you are the lifeblood of the Peralta community. So a little bit more about Frederick Douglass. As you know, he was born into slavery and he was a self-taught uh, man and extremely um, uh, eloquent in his oratory skills. He was also a lover of humanity. He attended the first Women's Rights Convention in Seneca Falls and spoke on behalf of uh, equal rights for women and people of all races. And what I'd like to say about Frederick Douglass is again, compassion, courage, and struggle brings about progress and achievement, and that's what we are celebrating today. And in closing, I'd like to remind us all of the words of Frederick Douglass. He said, where there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom, yet depreciate agitation, are men who want crops without plowing the ground. They want rain without the thunder and the lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its waves. This struggle may be a moral one. Now he's talking about the struggle for equal rights for all human beings. And this is back in 1848. He said, this struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without demand. It never did, and it never will. So your struggle has brought us to this day of progress and achievement, and we celebrate you today. You fill our hearts with pride. We are proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2018. Class of 2018, as uh, you just heard from our president, congratulations. I also want to congratulate the parents, the significant others, those who have supported our graduates. You are heroes and you deserve this uh, recognition as much as our graduates do, and thank you for supporting them. I have, I have some homework to do tonight with you. Uh, not you graduates, but, uh, or yours will come a little bit later. But for um, those who are attending, here's what uh, someone said in Tomorrow's Land. Uh, by the way, I, I was at a church where they showed that on Sunday, and I decided to uh, use uh, this passage on you tonight. It says, in every moment, there is the possibility of a better future. But you people won't believe it. And because you won't believe it, you won't do what is necessary to make it a reality. The fact of the matter is that two, three, four, five, maybe six years ago, some of uh, our graduates believed that there was a future and they chose to do something about it so they can see this future today. So we are inviting you, if you are dreaming, or we're inviting you to dream a future Perhaps in two years, three years, if you have not graduated from college yet, you can be here. That your future would be here one of these days. I want to share with you uh, a little secret that's going on in California that many of you don't know about. It is that the government of California decided that it will pay, it will pay for one full academic year plus one semester tuition for anybody who's graduating from high school this summer. Yeah. 
wait, wait, I have better news. Peralta has decided that if you graduate from Oakland Unified School District this summer, we will add another semester to it, so you get to go to college free of tuition for a full year, a full summer, and another semester. There is no excuse whatsoever. There is no excuse whatsoever for us not to encourage those who should go to college to go to college. And to you graduates, yes, you knew that there was going to be a future. So in every moment, you know there was the possibility of a better future. You believed in that uh, potential future. And because you believed it, you did what was necessary to make that future a reality today. Congratulations for that. The future, however, does not, does not uh, stop today. Your future does not stop today. As long as you are alive, you should continue to work, you should continue to study, you should continue to better yourself. So after today, if you have not made plans to look for a job, this is, uh, you need to do that tomorrow. <laughs> if you did not plan to go on and transfer to a university if you need to, you need to do that tomorrow because there is a better future waiting for you. And sometimes it is very difficult for us to see that future. Sometimes it is very difficult for us to see that future. I want to share with you, and, I, and I'm going to sit down in just a few seconds. I want to share with you one of your uh, gradu fellow graduates, Alessandra Cimenci. She said to me that she came, when she came to Peralta, I was the first person to welcome her as an international student. And I told her that there is a future and she's going to get to it, and she's here today as a valedictorian. I want to say congratulations to her. However, her future does not stop today. She told me that she wants to be someone like me tomorrow. Perhaps not necessarily a chance of Peralta, but there are plenty of CEO jobs that are waiting for all of you if you believe that there is a better future tomorrow. I congratulate you on what you've already done, but I commend you, I implore you, I beg you to look for a better future for tomorrow. Congratulations. Good evening, graduates, Merritt College 2018, your families, your friends, our Oakland community and surrounding communities. I want to follow up on President Brown's notion that your ancestors, you're realizing your ancestors' wildest dreams. Recently, I heard a talk by a philosopher who said that the body, the cells in our brains, in our bodies, are our ancestors and our parents. And every time we express ourselves, if I do this, my mother is here who gave me so much love here in Oakland, California when she raised me. Our ancestors, your mothers, your fathers, your ancestors are in your brains and in your bodies. And as you express yourself, you empower yourself and the world around you to live to the fullest possible means. Now from the faculty, other research in the area of brain development says that as we learn new beliefs, values, thoughts, behaviors, we change our brain and we change ourselves and we change the world around us. From the faculty behind me, from the faculty members that aren't here, we thank you for the honor and the privilege and the joy of having shared these many hours with you in the classroom and outside the classroom. We send you forward with a challenge and with a joy for life that says that as you share your ideas and your values with the world, you will change this world for a better place. Go with the power of Oakland, go with the power of Merritt College, and make this a better place to live. We, the faculty, say hurrah to you.
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. But first of all, before I begin my welcome, class of 2018, how y'all feeling tonight? <laughs> okay. Okay. My name is Dyshane Richardson, and I am the secretary of the Associated Students of Merritt College. On behalf of myself, ASMC, and the student body of Merritt College, family and friends, we welcome you to the 2018 commencement ceremony. It's an honor to stand before you all tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of each and every graduate in this room. As students, we work so hard to strive for knowledge, success, greatness. We thank you, Merritt faculty, staff, and administration for giving us the opportunity to make our dreams come true. I would like to close in a quote that I hope will remain with you all, not only tonight, but after we leave this place. It always seems impossible until it's done. Once again, congratulations, class of 2018. Keep aiming for the stars. Thank you. Thank you, President Brown, Chancellor Laguerre, Dr. Rivas, and Ms. Deshay Richardson. I now present the president of Merritt College, Dr. Marie Elaine Burns. Good evening, <clears throat> family, friends, Peralta trustees, Chancellor, and Merritt College faculty, staff, and administrative team, welcome to the 63rd Merritt College commencement ceremony. Most importantly, Merritt College class of 2018, congratulations. You've just heard our chancellor speak and plead with you to go out and make a bright future for yourselves. Malcolm X once said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it. Well, now you know, Merritt College faculty and staff have provided you with, with much of what you need to move forward and have a wonderful future. Merritt College is so proud of each and every one of you as I am personally. In the words of Dr. Herbert Kitchen, he tells our students this all the time, your success is our success. We look forward to this day to see all of you in all of your cap and gown and regalia, knowing that you're going out to the world representing merit in your families well. You learned that you are more than merely a survivor you now know the greatness that has been inside you all the time. It just took a little guidance, advice, chance, challenge, empowerment, and inspiration for you to take off and learn to thrive. You are no longer survivors, you are thrivers. You dug deep down many a day to pull on that inner strength you now are certain you have. Sometimes, it was beyond hard, but you licked your wounds and said to yourself, get up and keep on pushing. And you did. You kept your eye on the prize and you are here today. Although you may have been nervous and afraid when you first started out and even sometimes semester after semester, but you kept going because it's not how many times you fall down but how many times you get up and keep pushing. Someone once said, I learned that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave person is not the one who does not feel afraid, but the one who conquers that fear. And as Ms. Deshay Richardson just said, Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. Well, you've done it. And now you know the secret for success. Be a risk taker for good things because life is all about risk. You already conquered your fears once because you're here tonight graduating. Always remember and never forget to thank those who have supported you through this educational experience. If it weren't for the support of family members, including your children and little brothers and sisters, grandparents, friends, partners, classmates, for whom you are a role model and inspire from success, 
for their success, you would not be here. Don't forget to thank your ancestors for their wisdom and knowledge, their persistence through the struggle for equality and equity, for their sacrifices and sometimes their neglect that set us on paths that have led to this day. Don't forget to thank your teachers, counselors, staff, and administrators whose sensitivity, patience, ability to teach and reach you inside and outside the classroom inspired and motivated each of you to continue forward. And of course, family and friends for their support, understanding, encouragement that for many came at just the right time and kept you on this right path. As you go forward to a new job or a promotion on your current job, transfer to a university or whatever it might be, please remember that although you may have had struggles, it took talent, integrity, and strength of purpose to embark on the program certificate field of study you chose. Continue to rely upon those qualities within you and you will always achieve any goal you set for yourself. And remember to give back. Michelle Obama in her commencement address at Dillard University said, you all have opportunities and skills and education that so many folks who came before you never could have dreamed of. So just imagine the kind of impact you're going to make Imagine how you can inspire those around you to reach higher and complete their own education. So remember to reach back and pull someone forward from your family or your community. The feeling you will get from the face of a child, a senior citizen, a family member, or a stranger in your community is invaluable. You can't put a cash value on that. So getting your degree or certificate or transferring is not just about making more money. It's about what you give back. Cesar Chavez said, we cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about the progress and prosperity for our community. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sakes and for our own. Finally, it is time for you to pat yourselves on the back Realize how far you have come and know, and know and remember that you have what it takes to continue to achieve more. Today marks but one step in many of your future accomplishments. Go forward and continue your legacy of greatness. It is now your time to go out and change the world. Keep your eye on the prize. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, Nelson Mandela. And if you're gonna change the world, which many of you want to do, remember what Mahatma Gandhi said, and that is, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. You are changed forever now because Merritt College has prepared you, as you know, because at Merritt College, we change lives. Congratulations. <clears throat> As president, I take pleasure in presenting um, a future change agent, and that future change agent receives the college's president medallion. This honor is given for academic achievement and community involvement. Today I have the honor to present the Merritt College President's Medallion to Rakaya Gilchrist. Unfortunately, Rakai was unable to join us today um, for personal reasons. And so I just want to say we are so proud of her and the work that she's done and will continue to do. Please help me give her a round of applause. Academic tradition requires that we recognize students who distinguish themselves by achieving the highest honors of scholarship in the graduating class. These individuals are honored by having achieved the highest academic GPA of 4.0. I would like to invite Merritt's Vice President of Instruction, Dr. Jeffrey Lamb, to confer the valedictorians and salutatorian medals to our deserving students. I have the distinct honor and privilege of working with an outstanding group of faculty, staff, and administration. No one has ever said, 
I had this great vice president of instruction. They always say, I had the most amazing instructor. Or I had the, someone at the front desk helped me get what I needed. So I'm always really humbled by graduation ceremonies. And I, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like our faculty to stand up so we can give them a little applause. The, that's it. These are the people that change lives, right? So the valedictorian, I've got a speech to follow. I better I get in trouble. Dr. Kitchen's very militant about this. The valedictorian is an academic title given to the student with the highest ranking grade point average among their graduating class. I would like to acknowledge our valedictorians for the class of 2018. We have three of them. This year we have three, Brandy Carter, <laughs> Alessandra Quimienti, yeah. and yeah. Glory Awodi Ayomane. Yeah. Brandy Carter uh, has earned an Associate of Arts degree in Social and Behavioral Sciences and is graduating with a 4.0 GPA. <laughs> Having just come off of finals, you all know how hard this is, right? That's right. We've got uh, uh, Gloria Wodi has earned an Associates in Science for Transfer in Administration of Justice and is graduating as well with a 4.0. If you wanted to take a minute and go out and get a cup of coffee and come back, I'm going to give the list of awards and degrees that Alessandra has gotten. It's kind of a long list, so hold on here. <laughs> Alessandra Quimienti is graduating with three degrees, <laughs> earning an Associate of Arts in Accounting, General Business, and Business Administration. And I, you really got to give a minute for this one. She is graduating with a 4.0 in all three degrees. <laughs> So we're very honored to have um, uh, Alessandra come give a speech, and she's asked me if I wouldn't mind sharing one thing with you before she does. And she's been in the United States, she's from Italy, and has been in the United States for uh, just four years. And I want you to take note of the level of English, because she didn't speak any English when she got to the United States. Give yourself the challenge. Can you speak Italian as well as she speaks English after four years in Italy? Huh? It's, it's amazing. So, Alessandra, would you mind coming to the podium and give your speech? Thank you. Congratulations. I think we're supposed to give the medals. Oh, you got it. Okay. <laughs> Class of 2018, I think somebody already asked you, but how are we doing? <laughs> Woo! I don't know if everybody understood, but we are graduating today. So how are we doing? Come on! That's right. I was thinking about what to tell you today, and I found myself encountering always the same quotes. Be fearless, be brave, be curious. Instead, I decided to go my own way and to just simply tell you what's in my heart today. When I arrived here four years ago, as Dr. Lamb told you, I didn't speak any English, so I had a lot to overcome the language barrier, the cultural differences, the loneliness. But after being here in this proud, rich community that is Oakland and Merritt College in particular, I learned what real issues some of you had to go through in order to be here today. When I look at this beautiful crowd of graduates right in front of me, I see a lot of single parents. I see people who had very tough beginnings. I see people for whom this degree might be a chance, or maybe even a second chance. But you know what I also see? I see potential. I see strength. I see determination. I see people who decided to improve their lives with education, no matter how hard that was. So I think that you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of who you are, of what you're doing. You should be proud of the place that you're from your story, your background, 
If you have an accent like I do, be proud of it. Because all this is what make us who we are. And also be proud of being part of this beautiful family that is Merritt College. And thank our administrators, our staff, our faculty, because they are part of the reason why we're here today. They are the people who got us here. And thank the families, the friends, the people who supported you. I have my friends, I have my host family, I have my husband here, and I even have my mom who came all the way from Italy just for me today. Yes. Yes. They are my strength, and I am sure that you have people like them. So thank these people because they really did a great job with us. However, today is not just my day as valedictorian. Today is a chance for me to thank you all and all the people who helped me to get to this position today, to where I'm a foreigner that feels welcomed. And I am really thankful to all of you and to those people in the stage. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Don't stop improving yourself. Don't ever stop improving yourself. This is just the first of so many steps. Don't see, don't look at this degree as a destination. Look at this degree as a beginning. You are starting from today. You're not ending today. Yes. I have learned so much from all of you. And if there is one thing that I really learned from you, is the power of determination. And I have the utmost respect for every single one of you who made it here today to graduation despite the challenges, despite the difficulties, despite everything, you guys made it. And it is amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. There is only one thing that I would like to say, that I really believe in what I'm telling you. Don't stop improving yourself. Keep moving forward. Keep shining. Keep your eyes on the prize. For everything that you are about to do, I wish you the best of luck. And for everything that you've done so far, congratulations. Congratulations. All right. So I've got to find my space in the speech here. Hold on. There we go. So I've got some valedictorians that are going to step forward. Um, Glory. And I think Brandy. There's Glory. Unfortunately, Brandy can't be here with us today, so we're going to go ahead and give these two um, valedictorian awards here. Here are the Sandra. So this gets complicated. I think I may just go like this. Ta da! There we go, Glory. There we go. Ta da! <laughs> Congratulations to you both. Really. You did a great job. I've tried to put them over the hat before, and it's really not pretty, so they'll do that later. So we also have a salutatorian, uh, which is an academic title given to the student with the second highest grade point average um, over the entire of, the, of all the entire graduating class. And I'd like to um, uh, I'd like to acknowledge our salutatorian uh, Wen Yuang. No, oh, Wen Cho. Thank you, Wen Cho. Please come forward. <laughs> Wen Cho. Um, and Wen has uh, earned an associate's degree in child development and is graduating with a 3.98 GPA. Thank you. So let's go ahead and congratulate our Merritt College valedictorians and salutatorians for their academic accomplishments. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our 2018 commencement speaker, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Let me give you a little background on him. Dr. Kimbrough has spent his entire career um, interviewing peak performers all over the world and gleaning the best ideas, strategies, and success principles from their words. Dr. Kimbrough received a, his bachelor's degree from the University of Oklahoma and a master's of art and doctorate from Northwestern University where he studied wealth and poverty in underdeveloped countries. 
Dr. Kimbrough is on the faculty at Clark Atlanta University School of Business Administration. He is a recipient of the Dale Carnegie Personal Achievement Award. Dr. Kimbrough is a best-selling author of five books, writing partner and master trainer for the prestigious Napoleon Hill Foundation. One of his books, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice, distills the secrets of success contained in the lives of peak performing African-American men and women and reveals how readers can use these keys to make their dreams come true. His fifth book, The Wealth Choice, Success, success, success <laughs> Secrets of Black Millionaires, was released February 2013. Dr. Kimbrough has appeared on the Today Show, the Larry King Show, CNN, and has been featured in Success Magazine, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and USA Today on numerous occasions sharing the keys to success and achievement. Dr. Kimbrough is married and the father of three daughters and three grandchildren. He lives and teaches in Atlanta, Georgia. Please help me welcome to the podium, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Oh, there's nothing to fear. You can and you will, for you're the invincible you, so set your foot on the highest hill. Class of 2018, 63rd annual commencement. And let me say this, graduates, over the course of your life, you're going to participate in a slew of Fourth of Julys, a number of anniversaries, far too many birthdays to count. But at the associate level, this is it. This is your graduation. So as the old rappers say, get crunk, get crunk, hashtag, boss life, hashtag, no cap, every day we lit, give it up. Wow, to Madam President, Dr. Burns, job well done. 6,000 students, here we are at Merritt College, and when you guys say your slogan, at Merritt College, we change lives, you aren't kidding. To the proud alumni, if we have some proud alumni here, and your alumni, yes. Everybody from uh, Master P, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk with him years ago. Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale. Oh, my God. And to the parents, grandparents, surrogates, well-wishers, honor is due to you. Oh, yes. I know about the motivational talks and the countless sacrifices and the monies and the late-night conversation as the father of three college-educated daughters. I also know about the threats, I mean tough love. <laughs> and before we marched in with the processional, I'm sitting there, I'm actually standing there talking to your esteemed president, and my mind goes back to my middle daughter. And my middle daughter, like her dear old dad, she uh, attended her alma mater, my alma mater, University of Oklahoma, nearly 20 years ago. If anybody's ever been out in Oklahoma in May, as we say in olden times, it can get powerful hot out there. And I remember when she participated in her graduation and we fly out to Norman, Oklahoma, and I did everything in my power to sit in the audience and watch my daughter walk across the stage, flip that tassel, and I said, man, be a good time for me to go back into that parking lot, sit in that rental car and cut the air condition on and dry my soaking wet shirt. While I'm seated out the car driving off, drying off, guess who comes running up to me with degree in hand? My middle daughter. And she says, Dad, now that I graduated from college, what you going to get me for graduation? I said, baby girl, that's, uh, that, that's easy. I'm going to give you three things. Number one, I'm going to give you some advice. <laughs> Keep your nose clean, put your trust in the Lord, and you can't help but to succeed. <laughs> Number two, 
I'm going to give you a copy of each of my five books. <laughs> yeah, you know where I interviewed scores of peak performing, high achieving men and women. I want you to read these books, girl. I want you to highlight them. I want you to write notes in the margin. And I want you to apply these principles in your life. That will put you on the fast track. Then she said, well, what you going to get me for number three with an attitude? <laughs> I said, girl, I'm going to give you something that you haven't had at this point in your life. I'm going to give you the opportunity to experience life full blast. I'm going to give you the chance to really carve out a name and existence for yourself. So beginning this day, this hour, this minute, this moment, this second, me and your mother are officially cutting you loose. <laughs> Needless to say, graduates, that didn't go over too well. And for that, she called me a player hater. I said, what, what in the world's a player hater? She said, Dad, hate the game, not the player. I said, what's your yeah, Dad, forget it, Dad, you're too old. I said, well, if I'm too old, uh, you're not old enough. I said, I, you know, you need to be like, you sound like you're just like Johnny. She said, who in the world is Johnny? I said, you know the story of Johnny? No, Dad, I don't know anything about no Johnny. I said, come on, everybody knows the story of Johnny. Seven o'clock in the morning, on a school day, mama yells upstairs, Johnny, get up, it's time to go to school. No answer. She yells again, boy, get up out of that bed, you're gonna be late for school, still no answer. She walks up the steps, goes to his bedroom door, knocks on the door, no answer, opens up the door and sees her son lying in that bed. She goes over there and nudges him and says, man, if you don't get up out of that bed, you're going to be late for school. Johnny rolls over and says, mom, I can't believe you woke me up for this. He said, no, nah, I'm not going to school today. She said, nonsense, I won't hear none of it. He said, no, nah, I'm, I'm really not. I can't stand that school and no one at that school likes me. She said, what in the world are you talking about? He said, you know, yesterday I was walking down the halls and I saw some teachers talking about me behind my back. And then there were some students off in the corner, and they were pointing their finger at me. I can't stand that school. That school doesn't stand me. I'm not going to school today. She says, I won't hear of it. He said, Mom, why in the world do you want to send me through all the pain, torture, and torment of going to school today? She said, two reasons. She said, number one, you're 42 years old. <laughs> and number two, you're the principal. <laughs> No, nah, students, in all seriousness, congratulations, job well done, but let me tell you, it is time to fly. It is definitely time to fly, and if anything I've done over the course of my career and course of my teaching life, and I bring you greetings from my school, Clark Atlanta University, specifically the School of Business, and I want to tell your valedictorians and your salutatorians face to face, I got to come clean. Oh, yeah, it ain't all that. I tell my students all the time, I had a 4.0 until the first accounting quiz. You can forget it after that. But it's time to fly, and all I did is sit at the feet of peak performing, high achieving men and women. And when you look at the black community, you name them, and I probably interview them. Everybody from Tyler Perry to Steve Harvey. Tyrese Gibson, the actor, the Fast and Furious even, spoke in my class. And I found four common chords which you can apply that I found seated at their feet. Number one, they dream big dreams. They had a dream, a passion, something that they desperately wanted to accomplish in life. In 1944, there's a knock at the door of President of Morehouse College, Benjamin Mays. And then walks a middle-aged man and a 15-year-old son. That middle-aged man said, Dr. Mays, I would be remiss if I didn't knock on your door today. Me and your son, we were touring your campus. He's going to be a freshman in your fall class in 1944. And when your administrative assistant told me that you were in today, I said it would be foolish on my part if I didn't at least, you know, introduce you to my son. Oh, he's going to be a good son. And listen, Dr. Mays, I'm not here to beg for tuition. I don't even need money for room and board and books. I'm completely prepared to pay for my son's education. I know he's going to be a good boy, 
but I want to make sure that he leads a life worth living. And all I want you to do in this little feeble commencement address is to say a few words to him that just might inspire him to greatness. Benjamin Mays got up out of his chair, walked over to that 15-year-old boy, and you listen to me, class of 2018, grabbed that young boy's hands and says, listen, I have no problem if you don't reach the stars. But young man, I got a big problem if you don't have stars to reach for. And listen, I'm not going to get an attitude if you fail to reach your goals and objectives, but you and I won't see the eye to eye if you don't have goals and objectives to reach. High aim is not the problem. Low aim is. And students, who was that middle-aged man? That was Daddy King. And who was that 15-year-old boy? He was Martin Luther King. And I'm not going to bore you. I got to tell you anything and everything you want to know about Martin Luther King. But number two, so number one, they dreamed big dreams. Number two, they were inner-directed versus outer-directed. In other words, they weren't so quick to believe well-meaning friends or family members who said, you can't do this, you can't do that. I want you to be just like Sammy, class of 2018. Dr. Kimber, what in the world are you talking about? Sammy is eight years old in the third grade. He's seated at his desk in school painting a picture. And the teacher comes by and says, Sammy, what are you doing? Sammy says, I'm painting a picture of God. Teacher says, well, no one knows what God looks like. Sammy says, they will in a minute. You better believe in yourself. Well, no one else will. Here I am with Tyler Perry, and I said, Tyler, how in the world did you go from sleeping in your car in New Orleans and sleeping in your car in Atlanta, Georgia, to building a $145 million production studio? What did he tell me? Nothing but the grace of God. Number three. Oh, you're going to love this. Number three, they dedicated themselves to lifelong learning. What in the world does commencement, what is the definition of commencement? It's not the ending, it's the beginning. Everybody at Clark Atlanta knows my classroom because all the signs I have all around my classroom. On the door to my classroom, I got a sign that reads, if you don't want to work hard, you don't belong here. And if you don't want to lead, under no circumstances walk through my door. Then if you got the guts, if you got the courage, if you got the temerity to walk into my classroom, I got another sign that says, if you don't read, if you don't study, if you don't grow, if you don't develop, if you don't go to the conferences, if you don't go to the seminars, if you don't read the books, if you don't take good notes, somebody else out there in the universe will. And the day you meet that other person, you lose. This journey that we call life, graduates, it's a classroom, and unlike any classroom that you've ever been in, you're not only the student, but you're the teacher. So I'm challenging you to teach yourself well. And then last but not least, as I conclude this little remark, number one, they dreamed big dreams. Number two, they were interdirected. Number three, they dedicated themselves to lifelong learning. And last but not least, they flat out refuse to fail. You see, that's the heart of greatness. There's only two requirements of leadership, students. Number one, the price of leadership is always loneliness. Did you hear what I said? It's always loneliness. Look, damn it, don't you wait for anybody to join you. The majority, don't wait on the majority. The majority never get it right. Do you think the majority said, you know, it would be a good idea. It would be a good idea if we freed the slaves. No, the majority never said that. It started off with one or two Quakers, abolitionists. The majority said, do you think the majority woke up one day and said, you know, it would be a good idea. It would be a good idea if we gave women the right to vote. No, the majority didn't say that. It started with the suffragette Susan B. Anthony. Great social movements never begin with the choir. They always begin with the soloist. Number one, the price of leadership is always loneliness. And number two, you can never be concerned what other people think, say, or do. Somebody said it couldn't be done.
But he with a chuckle replied that maybe he couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say till he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face. If he worried, he'd hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one ever has done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat, and the first thing we know, he begun it with a lift of his chin and a bit of a grin without any doubting or quit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. There are thousands to tell you cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy failure. There are thousands ready to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But with the lift of your chin and a bit of your grin, you just take off your coat and go to it. You start in to sing as you tackle the thing. What makes the great, great? There I am with Mae Jemison, first black woman in outer space. I said, my God, Dr. Jemison, a physician and an astronaut too. When did you get this idea? She said, you can find it in the word lifestyle. Life is God's gift to you. Style is what you do with it. There I am with Bob Johnson, the founder of BET Television. I said, Mr. Johnson, give me the answer to greatness. She said, you can find it in the word grindstone. But whether it grinds you down or polishes you up depends on what you are made of. Janetta Cole, first woman, president of Spelman College. What does she tell me? Show me somebody content with mediocrity, and I'll show you somebody destined to fail. There I am with Damon John, and I said, Damon, what was the high water mark in your life? He said, what do you mean the high water mark? When you didn't know if you were going to fail or succeed. He said, when I had to burn the furniture. I said, what in the world are you talking about burn the furniture? He said, well, when I finally got financing from Samsung, and I hired all these seamstresses, and they showed up at my mother's house, I had no place to put them nor their equipment. I said, what did you do? He said, I took all the furniture out of my mother's house, put it in the backyard, and set it on fire. Students, if you set yourself on fire, the world will come see you burn. And don't you ever forget, the greatest number in the universe is one. The greatest number in the universe is one. One Sunday sermon could give you the power to last an entire week. One smile could put a little pep in your step. One handshake could give you the confidence that you need. One teacher can lift you up to greatness. One creator blew breath into your lungs, but one mother brought life into you and put you in this world. <laughs> Madam President, I am out of here. God bless you, class of 2018. Thank <laughs> you.